I want to preach about cities of refuge. So there are six cities of refuge. One, two, three. So three on the east side of the Jordan, three on the west side of the Jordan. Anyone who kills a man unintentionally, without any purpose or malice, without any evil intent, it was an accidental death. It happened randomly. It's like a, you threw a stone, you thought that nobody was there, the stone fell from a roof and hit someone on the head and it was a, just like that, it was an accident. If you kill a man accidentally, you could run to these cities and find refuge, protection, and you, you will be provided a house to live in and you will have a fair trial, right? Back then, that, back then, the law of Moses is this. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, death for death. If you kill a person, that person can kill you. But God seems to say, Joshua, build six cities to protect people who accidentally, unintentionally, this bad misfortune happens. So these people could run and save their lives. So these six cities, uh, they, these cities are in the land of uh, Levi's town. Levi got their portion of towns. So the priests live in these cities and the priest protects these people from the avenger of blood. The Bible calls that anyone, they could take revenge on the person. So as soon as you kill a person, you run to these towns. You run to these towns. Right. Okay, hi James. So James, you see me on the screen, right? Yep. Okay, good. So these six cities are cities of refuge. So you run to these towns and save your lives when you have accidentally killed a person unintentionally. Okay. Who is our city of refuge? Who is our city of refuge in our life? James, who is our city of refuge? This is symbolic. Are you there? Yeah, Jesus. Uh, I'm about to go on a train right now, so I won't be able to really talk. Okay. Go out on a train? Okay. Okay, God is our city of refuge. Okay. So, these city, six cities of refuge are symbolic of God, Jesus Christ, right? So when we have problems, we run. So these guys, these people have to really, after accidental death, they have to save their life. They really have to run to these cities. The closest cities, they got to seek out and run to save their lives. Once they are in that city, they are protected and provided and they can stand in a fair trial and present their case, right? So, this is very symbolic of Jesus Christ, God. God is our city of refuge. So, we, when we have problems, when we have difficulties and hardships in our life, we run to God. God is our protection. God is our refuge. God gives us protection and He provides for us. In times of difficulties and hardships, you run straight to God. You don't run to man. You don't run to people. God is our city of refuge. Jesus Christ is our city of refuge. Jesus, and Jesus is telling us to come to Him. So this is my testimony. So many years ago, 
I was going through hard and difficult times in my life. And I felt rock bottom. I was so crushed and heartbroken that living my life every day was so difficult and hard. Every day I had to like struggle to go to work. At that time I was working in a haven as a teacher and a bus driver. So life was very difficult for me. I was heartbroken and crushed spiritually, and emotionally, physically. So every day getting up, going to work was doing just simple thing was hard. I was so emotionally dry and empty. I felt like I fell down, hit rock bottom, and I felt like I couldn't get up. My spirit was just crushed. Uh, so in those days, I was crying out to God. I was seeking God, praying to God. Those are one of the dark days in my life. So every morning before I go to work, I was praying and seeking God more than one hour per day, sometimes two hours. I was praying because I had to pray to make it through each day because life was very hard and difficult for me. I was emotionally unstable. So every day I had to pray hard to make it through each day. It was a difficult time in my life. So one day I was praying and in my vision, I, God gave me a vision and in my vision I saw numbers. The number was 461. <laughs> in my vision I saw number 461 and, and then I was thinking, what could these numbers mean? And I continued to pray. Pray. This time I saw 462. First, first I saw 461 and second time I saw 462. And I was thinking, oh God, what is these numbers that you have given me? And then I realized that later on that these numbers are Psalms chapter 46. So these are number 461 and 462. And I look up the, I realized that God was telling me a scripture and He gave me this scripture to me, 461, 462. And the Bible says from Psalms, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. So God gave me this scripture to me. This is the first time that He gave me numbers. Then I realized that God is my refuge and strength. I was going through hard times and difficult times. And God told me, I'm your refuge. And I'm your strength. I'm the very present help in your trouble. I'm there for you. So whenever you are troubled, whenever you are going through difficulties and hardships, run to me, come to me, and you will find protection. I'm your refuge. I'm your shelter. I will strengthen you. I will help you. God is inviting us in times of difficulties and hardships to come to Him and you will find protection, you will find strength, and you will find provision. God knows everything about us. In life, there will be good days and sometimes you will go through hard times and difficult times. And in those difficult times, in the dark tunnel days, you're going through this dark tunnel you got to seek God, you got to pray to God, you got to run to God because God is your refuge and your strength and your very present help in trouble. Not only me, God is telling you this message. God is inviting us to come to Him when we are in times of trouble. Come to me, I will give you refuge and I will help you. Psalms chapter 50 verse 15 Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. God is telling us, pray to me, seek me in your day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will glorify me. God is more than willing to help us. So you should run to God and seek God in the times of difficulties and hardships, in your adversity. He is our refuge, He is our strength and He will help you and sustain you. So He sustained me through that dark times. It was hard and difficult getting up 
in the morning was difficult. Even that was difficult for me. God sustained me. I made it through. And I'm much better now. Uh, so Psalms chapter 118 verse 8 to 9. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princess. So your confidence, your protection, your trust comes from God, not from man. Right? You got to run to God. You got to run to the cities of refuge. Then God will protect you. Men are conditional beings. They are not perfect. They have limitations. So don't look to men, but look to God. Don't look to man. Don't run to man. But look to God and run to God. So David had a difficult life uh, because he was going to become the next king. Saul tried to kill him many times because Saul was very jealous of King David, right? Because wherever David went, God gave him success. He was very successful. People cried out, Saul killed 10,000. I mean, Saul killed thousands, but David killed 10,000. And Saul was very jealous because David, God gave success to David everywhere when, everywhere he went. His battles were always successful in war campaigns. And Saul was very jealous. And later on, Saul tried to kill David. And so David had to run to the desert, right? So over a decade, a decade, more than 10 years, David was living in the wilderness, running away from Saul. And in these hard and difficult times, he wrote the book of Psalms. And God protected David in the wilderness. Right? Saul tried to kill David many times, but God hid David from Saul. The Bible says God protected David from Saul, and then actually the opposite happened. God gave Saul into David's hand. David had two chances to kill Saul, but David didn't kill his master, didn't kill the king, because how could I kill the man who was anointed by God? to be the king. I will not raise my hand against the king, the anointed. So David spared Saul's life two times. But still, Saul tried to kill David many times. So David had to be on the run constantly in the wilderness. And David wrote these psalms and confessed that God is my strength and my refuge. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. So Psalms 91, verse 1 to 4. So Psalms 91 is a very important book. David wrote this also. Psalms 91 is a famous chapter. If you never heard of it, you should read it. It's all about God's protection. I'm going to read it for you, Psalms. I, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Just Psalms 91, verse 1 to 4. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His means you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. So, and it goes on to say, Psalms chapter 91 verse 10, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. So in the time of 
2020, right, March, the coronavirus hit New York City. COVID-19, COVID-19 came to New York City 2020, March. It came hard in New York City, to New York City, in Queens. Animals Hospital, a lot of people were dying. And they dumped the bodies in Animals Hospital. They put the bodies into the truck. And Animals Hospital became the center. The virus was spreading like a wildfire in New York City. I was watching TV and the numbers were going up, the death toll were going up and we had to shut down everything, right? No one go to work, no one. We had to stay in the house for like three weeks or months. I, I couldn't remember. No one was allowed out of the house. I was so scared. At that time, the virus was very strong and a lot of people died from the virus, right? Corona, COVID-19. And when it started to happen in the news, a lot of people were dying. And New York City was become became the epicenter of the virus. A lot of people were sick and going to the hospital. A lot of people died. And I was so my work, my church stopped. Everything stopped. No one went to work. Right in those days, we stayed at home for three months. I think three or four months. No one was allowed out of the house except for the important people, the nurse, doctors, and the police. So everything stopped. And a lot of people started to die, right? And I was concerned for my parents because they are 65 years or older. Their, older, the, their chances of getting the virus and the dying was higher than me because of their immune system is weak. And I was praying for my family, for my parents, because they are old, right? I was praying for them. I was praying over them for protection. As I was praying and praying for my family, because I was worried about my parents, because they're not a strong faith Christians, but at that time, I, was, I had a lot of time and I was praying for my family. And God gave me Psalms 91. And He told me to recite Psalms 91 over my family. So I did that. Every day I did that. Psalms 91, 10. Chapter 91, verse 10. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, your house. No evil shall befall your family. Nor shall any plague, coronavirus, come near, near your dwelling. I recited this. I recited Psalms 91 over my family, God's protection over my family. These scriptures are God's promises of His protection from all kinds of evil, including the coronavirus, all the sickness and disease. Because this evil was going rampant in the world at that time. So a lot of Christians, including me and the Christians all around the world, they were praying and reciting these verses, Psalms 91, and I was one of them too. God promised us protection from all kinds of evil. Because we Christians are in covenant with God by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are in covenant. We are covenanted people by the blood of Jesus Christ. So we are in relationship with Him. So we are in covenant with Him. That means God promised us His protection, His provision, His blessing, all that kind of stuff. Because we are under the shadow of His mighty wing. So I was so scared, I was, I was praying, praying for my family, for my parents, and God taught me that you are in covenant with me, and I gave you the promise to protect you, Psalms 91. You are guaranteed God's protection, God's blessing, God's provision, God's healing. 
And this is, and God told me about the Israelites in the time of the Moses, the ten plagues. Moses performed ten plagues in Israel, in Egypt, right? The water turned into blood, the frogs, the lies, the darkness, the all kinds of plagues, ten plagues. But when Moses was performing these ten plagues, and the Egyptians were suffering from these plagues, but God protected the Israelites. They were in the land of Gosen, and they were protected. They were separated and they were protected from this plague. While the Egyptians were suffering terribly from this plague, his people, his covenanted people, were protected. Now no harm, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. They were protected. God was with them. God gave me this message to me. I protect my people. They are under the shadow of my wings. No evil shall touch them. And I was so relieved. I was so happy that God gave me the message. And I was not scared anymore for my family and or for myself. Because we are God's people. We are in covenant with God. And God protected our family. This is my story and my testimony. I hope you have test some of you might have testimony of your your own self. Same thing with the with the war on Ukraine and the Russia. I was so frustrated that in, like one year so one year ago, like when Russia invaded Ukraine, we we were praying as a church. Like I was in a different church, we were praying in the church about the war, and we were praying for the people in Ukraine because Russia just started to attack Ukraine, and a lot of people died, and they were fleeing the city, and I was praying. On that Friday night worship service, I was praying for the people of Ukraine. God, please save them and protect them, protect them, help them. And God gave me this message. I always protect my people, my children. And I was so relieved. I was so happy. God protects his people, his children. This is my faith, and I want to share my faith with you, my faith, the middle with you, so your faith could be increased. God protects His people, God blesses His people, and God gives provision. That means food and all the money that you need. God is with us, and God helps us. So live in faith. Live in faith. Sometimes, even though I experience this, there are days like I feel so strong in faith, and then something happens in my life, my faith goes down, and I have to pray and get back again in faith, seek God, and pray. So keep on seeking God, keep on praying to God, and be with the people of faith. Read the Bible that has faith, scriptures that has faith, like the book of Joshua, the New Testament, Psalms is a very strong faith book. I read like more than 100 times the book of Psalms. Psalms is very important. God told me to read Psalms. Psalms is very important. He showed me visions about Psalms. So let's live in faith and I feel like God's going to bless our church and multiply our EM and youth group. We have to have faith and pray. Uh, let's pray for our church. Let's pray for our EM and youth group. Let's in, live in faith. 
And we got to practice our faith, right? Live by faith and practice by faith. Okay. So, so this is my conclusion. Six cities of refuge. God is our refuge. Run to Him in times of crisis and pray. Seek God. God honors those kind of prayers. God honors. And God's going to reward you and He's going to help you. Okay, don't look to men. Don't look to people. Look to God. And He wants to, He is more than willing to help us. People are conditional beings. People, they are limited people. So don't trust them too much, but trust in God. Okay, let's pray. Thank you.